after months and months and months of people asking me to watch RRR, this weekend I finally was able to watch it. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, if you've seen RRR, what did you think about it? Let me know down below in the comment section. Now, if you don't know what RRR is, it is a film from India. And like many films from India, it combines a bunch of different genres. It's an epic, it's an action film, it's a comedy, it's a musical. And at its core, it's really about friendship. And even before I kind of go into the review, if you're looking kind of like find an entry point for Indian cinema, this is probably a good entry point. Also, I have covered a couple other Indian films on my channel. Back a couple years back, I reviewed Three Idiots, and then back in 2019, I talked about Jalakatu in a video about a film festival that I went to. You can check out the links for those right up here. And let's get started with the review. And I'll just cut right to the chase. I thoroughly enjoyed this film. Kind of takes you on a full spectrum of emotions. It delivers all sorts of entertainment value. And anytime you get used to what it's doing, it's probably about to do something insane and turn the entire movie on its head. And obviously I primarily cover Hollywood, American films, and in particular blockbusters, and when it comes to uh, American cinema, there's just kind of certain assumptions about the way movies work, the way rules are established, the way that the laws of physics apply, how genres work. And so when you, you go into this movie that's coming out of an entirely different culture, a different way of thinking about films and entertainment, it doesn't have those assumptions about how things work and how you establish the rules of the movie that you're watching. They, that's not how this works at all. So you go into it and it just is this gigantic wild ride with both the story, with the journey of everything, of the genres that you're taking part in as you watch the film. And it's so earnest, it's so sincere in everything that it's doing that it's hard to not just get a big gigantic grin on your face from beginning to end. It just plays everything uh, without subtlety. Whether it's the abilities of our heroes, whether it's how evil and villainous the villains are, whether it's the feelings that people have about a situation, everything is so sincere. It's right there in your face and it just goes for it. it. It's not embarrassed by it. It's reveling in all of it. And because of that, uh, it's just like, just feels like a pure experience as you're watching the film and everything kind of going on. So without going to go into too many details as to the story, if you, you haven't seen the movie, but like at its core, it's about a girl from a small village who's taken by the British ruling class. They take this girl that's really good at singing. And so then the village sends someone to rescue her. And then there's someone in the British police that's trying to stop the person that's been sent in to rescue her. That's kind of like the basic plot of what's going on here. But that doesn't really even begin to describe the experience of the movie. Like, at, like when they set up that premise, I was like, okay, like I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch of twists and turns when it comes to the complexity of what's going on with the plot. But really there's not. It really is as simple as the goal is to, to rescue this girl. And that's what takes this movie three hours to do. But what it does is it just has so many layers to everything that happens in between girl being taken and the final credits rolling of diving into these two people that are at odds when it comes to, are we trying to save the girl? Or are we trying to make sure she stays with the British? What's everyone's motivations? There's like so many layers to everything going on. And so it feels like this gigantic epic journey while being a very straightforward story at the exact same time. And 
<laughs> so many different things to kind of dive into with this movie, but like it, it kicks off and we see kind of this police officer in the, the British forces who, who is Indian. And so then there's this sense in which he's betraying his own people by being their blunt instrument to get things done. And right out of the gate, they, they have him have to run into a riot to try and capture someone. And he's fighting off dozens of people. And you just right out of the gate, see how it's so different from the way American Hollywood cinema treats this sort of situation, this sort of action sequence, where he, he's doing all sorts of things that you can't really do, defying physics, but it just goes for it. It's not winking at the camera. It's not in, like treating it like it's cheesy or goofy. It just plays out this idea that there are just these Herculean people that can just throw down 10 people that have caught, jumped on top of them. And beyond that, as an action sequence, while it's about one guy, there's hundreds of extras. It's a huge sequence where there's hundreds of people and at the center of it, you have this fight and it's all long takes. It's the sort of thing you like, you, you're watching, like you just haven't, I haven't seen things like this recently where they just go for it on this grand of a scale. You're like, wow, this is, this is wild. And then we see kind of an adventure in the jungle and it's the same sort of idea, trying to establish kind of the protector from from the tribe where he's battling tigers and stuff like that. And it's ridiculous, but so sincere. And it goes for it. And it, that's like, you buy into it because the movie buys into it. And just these gigantic heroic actions and incredible feats of strength that are ridiculous at their core, but played with utter sincerity that it just makes for just an, a fun adventure to be on with all of this. But, uh, and then, like I said, it's a genre bending thing. So as you get into it, you're like an hour in and then it just bursts into a song and dance routine. And when it, it's not like, oh yeah, they're like on a stage and there's a performance. Like it goes into full blown musical mode. And these guys that have been doing action sequences and dramatic moments now are singing and dancing. And like, it's just like that level of just full blown entertainment where the stars are actors. They look like action heroes. They can do action sequences like these gigantic scale stunts, wire work, filing tons of people. And they sing and dance in the movie and it just, just goes for it. And um, once again, with no subtlety, it just, it goes from tense to like, Ta-da! We're dancing. And so because the movie buys into it, you buy into it. But the, the thing at the core of it that I, I just loved is that it really is, it's about friendship. It's about a friendship that forms between two people. And much like everything else, the way that it portrays human feats of strength, the way that it portrays genres, emotions, its treatment of friendship, it lacks subtlety. It's two people that meet each other and then they immediately like each other and they immediately have respect for one another and become best friends. And it has like this childish simplicity to it that as soon as you see it, you realize how poorly friendship is usually treated in Hollywood films. Like it's like you're drinking buddies or it's like, it's like, something like there's all these versions that you see friendship in movies but you never see something just like this pure where two people just really really care about one another and i, I don't want to get like too far into it but it's like the sort of thing that when you read kind of analysis of it um and the way it's treated like there's people like like are they actually gay because of the way that they're treating each other and i, I just see things like that like those comments on it, it's like <laughs> Like we've lost friendship with people without wanting to put these extra emotions that friends can love each other. Friends can be incredibly close. And so much so that people see friendship in this movie RRR and all of a sudden they want to put romance into it. 
and they want to treat it like it's something besides just two people that are friends, but they, they absolutely care about one another and would give their life for the other person. And it's so sincere. Their concern, their love for one another, that's friendship. That I, I just love seeing that on the big screen. Even like you see these posters of them like, and in the trailer of them like, piggyback ride like in the United States. Grown men don't like give each other piggyback rides, but it's such like a pure act of friendship for, for children to do things like that. And that's been lost with adults. That we just, we don't think that way. We don't behave that way. There's just something so pure about a movie that just embraces it. And uh, like I said, uh, since I'm hoping that more of you will watch the movie that haven't seen the film yet. I, I've had a ton of people requesting I watch it literally for six months. Every day for six months, I had people ask me to watch this movie. And I've been planning on it for six months, but it's the three hour movies. It's just kind of tough to like make it happen. I just knew I wanted to do it before the end of the year. Um, but then there's a ton of other people that don't normally watch Indian films. So hopefully some of you can check it. So I don't go too many of the details, but like as you go into it, you kind of dive into the backstory of each of the characters, their motivations, the complexity to it, and um, what's really going on. There's some huge twists and turns in the back half of the film of real motivations, and um, it, and you just see how th this friendship and their genuine concern for one another. You, you have people that are that are sorry for hurting a friend and truly mean it when they're like, I would do anything for you. And when, like I said, when you tie to their, their, their motivations, what's really going on, it gets complex and they do things to one another and there's moments where you're like, oh no, if only he realized, oh no, what's really, there's all these kind of things that happen that you feel betrayal, you feel like all of it. Um, and you do so because you, you actually care about each of them and, and everything kind of going on with that friendship that they, they have. And I just love seeing it. It just felt like something that we don't normally get to see in in movies, like in this just pure and raw form. And then as you move into the final third of the movie and you get into the all out climax showdown battles of this movie, <laughs> it's, it's just wild because it's stuff that you would never put in a Hollywood film. They would never do this because they just, the, the assumption about what people want and rules and you have to have an explanation for how someone able to do things. This movie just doesn't care about explaining how these people are able to do what they're able to do in certain action sequences, in which case they just go, what's the most insane fun things that these heroes could do? And they play this out in an escape but with piggyback rides, riding horses, motorcycles, and it's just bonkers banana what goes on. And it's so entertaining. But also, because they've made you hate the villains, because you buy into the motivation of each of our lead characters and what's kind of going on with them, and they've established clear goals, clear objectives, they've made it like they, drill it into your brain, certain things the villains have done that are specifically like reprehensible, but memorable. It's not just evil acts, it's evil acts with like a line of dialogue attached to it. So you move into the final act and you have these huge spectacle things going on that are wild and crazy and like nothing I would have ever seen in a Hollywood movie. But then they have all these moments of payoff where like, oh no, are they going to be able to get this? Oh, I wonder who's going to do this. Oh, I hate that person. Oh, and they set it up so well that it's so satisfying as you move into the end of it. Couple other fun things in here. The big villain British governor is, is played by the guy that was Punisher in Punisher Warzone. So it's just fun to see him in this movie. But his wife, I didn't catch this while watching the movie. I didn't, the credits started rolling one. Oh, that's who that was. His wife is played by Alison Doody, who I, I haven't seen her in anything in quite literally over 30 years. She was Elsa in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the kind of the love interest character. She is the governor's wife in this, so she's a major part of the film. And I haven't seen her in anything in a long time, so it's pretty fun to get to see her in something again. And kind of interesting because she was like 23 when she did Indiana Jones. That movie came out over 30 years ago, so she's 
over twice as old as she was before. And so um, I, I didn't recognize her when I first, when she first showed up on screen, but it's, it's fun to see each of them kind of show up in the film. But overall, um, just uh, something wildly different from what I normally watch. And like just such a fresh new experience that's so entertaining so joy inducing like you really go through this full spectrum of emotions because you buy into the characters and they're like it's just like that that idea of purity sincerity that lack of cynicism uh anything like that it just feels like an honest film uh, about friends and about this revolution that can have action sequences that are bonkers and it can have musical numbers and then it can have just these gut-wrenching moments because you care about the characters. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I have some negatives in here. Um, three hours is a bit much. I mean, it moves quickly because there's so much in there, so many plot points and flashbacks, musical numbers, crazy action sequences. So it is a, it is a, like a, it does move at a nice pace, but it is an experience, like it's an experience to watch it. Uh, but also, um, can be a little bit tough to follow at times if you you don't know the cultural context of some of the stuff going on and so it, it just kind of drops you into the middle of it so you really have to pay attention to like try and track exactly some of what's going on and who's who and which is with which tribes and like there's a um, like the the guy that police officer that works for the the british that's one of our two main characters they introduce him and he has a real distinct mustache and then it cuts to him going off on a mission and he has more of a beard. And so the thing that was like made him stand out was like this really prominent mustache. And then it cuts to him and he's in a uniform and has a mustache and they cut to him like has a hat on, no hat, beard, civilian clothing. And without like, you know, knowing trying to pick up on the names and things like that, it, it, like we had like had to pause like, that's the same guy, right? Like, yeah, it's the same guy. He just, he changed his facial hair because he's going undercover. Like, oh, okay. Um, there's a few things like that. We're like just trying to track along with, there's so many characters, there's so many settings and you go from jungle to then seeing someone in a motor shop. And so there's just a lot of kind of moving around very quickly. Um, a lot of real specific things about what was going on in India with the British from a hundred years ago that like, I don't, know a ton of information about it so it's just kind of tough to follow some of the specific details and some it'll cut to flashbacks and so it's just a lot of kind of moving around there was times where i kind of lost a few things with all, everything going on all these characters massive scope and size and like oh so this is in the past now we're in the present and it wasn't always the clearest what was going on and i think there's a you know a couple different things some of that i just don't know the cultural context and it just drops you into the middle of it some of it's because it's just introducing to so many different things and different timelines different points in time that i just couldn't track with it really well but um that's it like by the time you get into the, you know get an hour into the movie you you have figured out all of those different things it just took a little bit i'd say the, the first 30 minutes um while they're introducing everyone kind of kind of everything before the friendship really starts is like okay this is entertaining this is kind of nice and then as soon as they become friends it kind of like pulls the whole movie together because you, you 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 get the tension of the story you get that bond that kind of is at the core of everything taking place and they're they're a lot more fun and entertaining together than they are kind of separate for for kind of a variety of reasons when you see the film you, you get a you get a vibe for why they're you see their full personalities when they're together, whereas there's a bit more one note otherwise. Oh, there's also romance in here. I mean, there's like so much in this film that just, it just goes for it. And everything is just so pure, so sincere. So um, if you haven't seen it, you're looking kind of like to try some different things. It might not be your taste. It might not be for you. I can totally understand why a lot of people that like a lot of the stuff I normally like would watch this and be like, I didn't get that. That was too weird. That was too wacky. Even like, you know, one of my YouTube friends, Mama Kiki, she said she just wasn't for her. She gave it a try. She just couldn't get into it. But like my wife, I'm watching with her and, you know, we don't watch big Hollywood stuff. That's what we normally watch. Like we get, they get to the dance number about an hour in. She's like, that's the happiest I've seen her watching a movie this entire year. She's like, just, just fell in love with the movie and just all the wild, crazy things. My wife's like, yes. And so then like she started interacting with Mama Geek and she's like, oh no, you didn't like, oh no. Like it's not gonna be for everyone, but it's also something that some of you might not naturally gravitate towards this type of, type of film. Um, just cause you're used to Hollywood. I th it's worth giving it a try. 
just to experience something different and see maybe you'll discover there is something uh, uh, new that you'll enjoy. It's worth checking it out and this is a good entry point. I I thoroughly enjoyed the film. I, I don't know exactly how to score a movie like this because it's um, when, when you don't ha watch a lot of movies of a specific style, um, you don't have a point of reference. When I talk about Marvel movies, I have all the other Marvel movies to, as a point of reference that I can easily compare which goes where. Here, I've only seen a handful of Indian films. Simply put, it's somewhere in the A category. Like I, that's, I thoroughly enjoy it. I had a great time with it. I thought it was very well done, besides being a little bit confusing at times, uh, kind of being new to the cultural context and so much stuff going on. But uh, besides that, one of my favorite movies of the year. You should definitely give it a try if you're looking to kind of expand the types of films that you check out. Uh, remember, I have covered a couple of other Indian films in the past. You can check out my review of Three Idiots right there. And in that Fantastic Fest video down there, I talk about the movie Jalakatu. I believe they're chapter markers. So you can skip ahead to the part where I talked about that film. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.